Our distinguished guest has come a long way since picking up tennis at three years old. He was a prodigy growing up, won NCAA singles and doubles titles with UCLA in 2016, went on to go pro and is making a big splash, got to the fourth round of Wimbledon and much more big things in his future. It is Mackie McDonald, former Bruin, one of UCLA's finest joining us on the podcast. Mackie, wonderful to have you on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brian. So you can follow Mackie on Instagram. He's almost got to 19,000 followers. So maybe those that watch this will follow him. He will get to 19,000. His Instagram handle is Mackie Maxter. If there's not a better handle and a name selection for that, I can't think of something. I'm on Twitter at Brian Fenley. And Mackie, just to think of all of the people in the UCLA camp and in the tennis world that are looking to you as an idol. I mean, you've got fan clubs all over the place. And I told current UCLA tennis player, Ben Goldberg, I was speaking with you. And I said, what impact has Mackie had on you? And I'm going to read this off. This was a text. He said, always looked up to him. He's someone that all the younger guys and current teammates admire. Bright future for him. And went on and on and on. What does hearing stuff like that, Mackie, say about you? And how does that make you feel? Honestly, that makes me feel pretty good. You know, I mean, I'm out in Florida now. I don't actually get to spend that much time in L.A. But, um, you know, I try to keep in touch with as many UCLA guys as I can. But hearing something like that is actually pretty pretty awesome. Um, you know, UCLA is really close to my heart for many reasons. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely want to help out all the guys I can as well. I've always seen how supportive you've been now that you are playing professionally, keeping tabs on what UCLA is doing in the tennis world. And you yeah. had – recently mentioned on social media that this has been in your words a, a hell of a decade this particular year and I can't even imagine because here you are you're coming off an injury you're recuperating you're feeling good and then all of a sudden tennis is on pause with the quarantine and the COVID-19 so what has all of this done Mackie to fuel your fire and ignite even more the work ethic and the want to prove that you are back and better than ever when tennis gets back rolling again yeah it's definitely been an interesting year you know I mean I was super happy coming back um, after that tough injury I had last year you know I've I put in a lot of work everything's going perfect and honestly I'm just really happy to be uh, healthy again you know yesterday was actually my one year anniversary of tearing my hamstring so it's uh you know if I look back on the year being healthy now the positions I put myself in just to get back and everything. It's uh, there's a lot to be proud of, you know, honestly in that, but um, yeah, I mean, starting out, out the year in Australia, you know, um, was really happy about that. You know, I got to play and do well, but even there with the fires, you know, things like, like that, that seems like forever ago. And now, and now, you know, a couple months later, you know, at Indian Wells, I was, I was finding my game. I was, you know, getting a lot of match play. That was something I really just needed, you know, coming back and, um, I mean, there's not much you can do about this. You know, this is just a crazy time in our world. But uh, I'm still putting all the pieces together a little bit. I I, I kind of look at this time as, you know, time I've missed from last year. So I'm, I've been playing, you know, as much tennis as I can. Just um, honestly, my legs feel great, strong, and um, just still plugging away. You got to stay with it if you can. In what respects, Mackie, do you feel like your game will look a little bit different before your injury to what it's going to look like now when you get back onto the tennis court, if any? Um, honestly, I'm super lucky because with my injury, like I even played, you know, a match today. Like I'm not even thinking about it anymore, which is great. Like my speed, if not, it's, I mean, there's no, no problems whatsoever. Um, honestly, if anything, you know, I had time to, build a really good base and foundation and also like when I came back my physio even said my my muscle my tissue is way softer and better than than uh it's ever been so that's actually nice to know but obviously with tennis you got to get match tough you got to get you know just extremely competitive and tough and um that's kind of just the next step you know I mean there's nothing like playing tennis matches and competing especially at that high level um and, and, and that'll come back. You know, I just think it's just going to take time like anything, but I don't think there's anything holding me back, which is nice. And I think I can just keep flourishing. In a way, when you're out there on the tennis court, you are in a, alone in your thoughts, right? This is yeah. your time where you have to grab a handle over 
the, the mental, the battles that go in your mind. And, and then you think about the whole shutdown we're going in. And, and in a way, it's given people extra time for that same sort of self-reflection and those skirmishes that go in your mind and you're thinking about things and how things are going to pan out. And what is it like when you're on the court and you have the battles in your mind? What does that look like in the skirmishes and figuring things out mid-match? And take us into the, the mindset of Mackie McDonald mid-match. Yeah, that's like, that's the zone. That's where you want to get to. Honestly, like the match feels being in there is like, I love that part. That's honestly, if I had to say one thing about competition and, and the tennis that I miss is it's like really just getting, you know, pretty dirty and, and, and deep in those matches. Cause it's, uh, I mean, that's kind of what really makes you tough. And like, that's where you really grow and learn about yourself too. But I feel like I just like really love competing like that. But, uh, I mean, and it, like in your mind during the matches, there's so many thoughts and things that go on. It's actually crazy. It's, it's, it's basically a roller coaster. Uh, you know, e e each match you play is, is like you go through so many different things. So, um, but I mean, if you can just zone in and focus on the things you need to, um, obviously the positivity is a massive key. And then it's just like just fighting. So what is your in-home gym setup like staying conditioned and obviously you have access to courts so what is that what does this all look like for for conditioning for you yeah so that's actually a big massive thing that's been uh probably the biggest change since i've turned pro um out of college is is the fitness and the and the strength and conditioning um when i got back from indian wells honestly didn't have a good setup i actually moved right uh when i got back right just moved into a new place so i didn't have one, I had to like, you know, get things organized in my new place, which was actually nice for this time. Um, but I didn't really have a good, or I didn't, I, I, I like just didn't have access. So I actually was lucky. I found a, someone had a home gym in their garage. That was really nice. And I got to work out there. Um, I did that for a while. And then, you know what, I just, I kind of pulled the plug on making my own home gym. So <laughs> out of squat rack here, uh, an assault bike, got all the weights I need. So I can do all my workouts and all my runs from home now, which is actually really nice because I don't think I'll be going to a proper gym for a while just with the circumstances. How do you go about, Mackie, picking your inner circle, those that are within your, your tennis board of directors, if you will, from, from a physio and an agent and all that standpoint, take us to how you build up your team to what you feel is most successful for you as a tennis player and also your brand. Yeah, you know, I think you're nothing without your team, to be honest. It takes a team, it takes an army to really, um, you know, perform at the highest level. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate to be always surrounded by really good people, you know, starting with the juniors, you know, my father, um, big tennis nut, and he got some really good people behind me to help really good tight circle too. And then I was lucky to have a pretty smooth transition into the pros with a coach, uh, provided by USTA and then um, my agency right away as well. And honestly, it's been no big speed bumps at all. Um, it's been pretty smooth. Um, you know, I'm lucky now I got, you know, my coach still and the strength and conditioning here at USTA and then my agent, same agent. Um, but it's a tight circle, you know. I mean, it's it's got to be all for one, one cause, one purpose. Like, you know, me performing at my best. But um, – it's also a business too. And that's something you learn once you turn pro, you know, it's about, you know, um, the brand making money. Um, so things change like that definitely from college. Yeah. I would think and, and Mackie McDonald joins us, former UCLA tennis player. I'm Brian Fenley is that the chemistry that you have off the court with that inner circle is going to be fundamental to your success on the tennis court as well. And when you look back so far at what you've done, in your career from the tennis game in, in college and also professionally, how well do you think the college game prepared you for going pro? Like if you were to rate that, what would that be? I'd say 9.3. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, but um, wow. no, but I mean, it was a pivotal, pivotal stepping stone in my career, to be honest. I don't, I, yeah, I don't really know what the number would be, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good number though. That was high, but uh, I mean, it's, it, it was honestly a big key for me. You know, I really felt like out of juniors, I think I had the chance to go pro. I think I could have done it, but um, 
looking back, there's no other path I'd, I'd rather choose now looking at what I did. I mean, I feel like there's so much to gain from college and playing college tennis. And I think a lot of people need to see that as well, that her, or that are younger and juniors and stuff. And I think there's just so much opportunity when you go to college, not just academically, but from a tennis standpoint, from a learning, growing, you know, working with a team. Um, you know, I learned a lot of the basics for my strength and conditioning from college. I was lucky enough. I mean, UCLA is near UST and Carson, or there's a lot of tournaments and futures down there as well. So, I mean, I had a ton of resources and it gave me time to grow and develop, kind of switch um, or like give me time where other guys that go pro, you know, struggle at that futures level to start. I was getting uh, an education at the same time. And then, you know, kind of just had challenger results and then just stepped out on the tours. So for me, it was, it was a massive uh, part of my development. And yeah. What is a motto or a one liner that you can't get out of your brain from something that, your UCLA head coach, Billy Martin, told you, like, you might be on the court, like, to this day, and you hear Billy's voice saying something to you, and it's been years since you've been playing. What is that, or what would that sound like? <laughs> Billy's an awesome guy. He's, uh, he's like a second father to me, to be honest. Um, close relationship, but I think he just, you know, he, he really cared. You know, he was a um, – one thing I would say is, is, I mean, it's a John Wooden quote, but just make each day a masterpiece. You know, it's uh, – you know, that's a big brewing pride there with John Wooden. But I think each day that we were there, I mean, you're so grateful to be, you know, at such a nice, beautiful place like UCLA. But, you know, we were always working towards something. And, and he knew what my goals were, and he helped me kind of achieve those. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. What's one match where you can't believe you won? Can't believe I won? Yeah. Um, in college? Either way, whatever stands out. Um, one match that just kind of sticks in my head. I mean, it's not that I can't believe I won. Cause I, I had a pretty good percentage in college, but you know, one match that doesn't really get talked about much was at, uh, at Ojai. Uh, we were playing the finals against Cal and I had had a tight three setter with Florin Lacotte, who was playing some big tennis, serving massive, hitting massive forehands. And it was a full stadium. It was kind of under the lights, maybe it's 6, 30, 7 p.m. And I clinched the match in the third set, and it was, uh, it was just a dog fight. You know, I was, I was definitely the favorite in the match, but, I mean, both of us were just fighting so hard. And I just remember, you know, winning that last Pac-12 for, uh, for the team. That was massive. I think it was like 7-5 or something in the third. Um, on the Pro Tour, lots of battles. I mean – I mean, there's a, there's tons of matches. I mean, I could say, you know, beating Milos at, uh, at Shanghai was a big one for me. Um, you know, I didn't really honestly believe I could do it um, before. I, I remember I actually pulled the uh, – I, I qualified, and they asked me, because I was still on site, to pull the chips and, and fill in the qualifiers to the main draw. And normally I'm pretty lucky with, uh, with uh, pulling stuff like that. And there's one spot I didn't want, and it was against Milos. <laughs> and I pulled the spot. And I, and I, oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, I don't want to play him because uh, he, he, he's just super tough. But I went out there, you know, pretty, pretty uh, angry at him beating me the last time and wanted to get some revenge. And I somehow pulled that match off, like, six, three, and third. So I was pretty pumped up about that. You play with a lot of ferocity, a lot of tenacity, and, and I love it. How about on the other end? What's one match where you can't believe you lost? Uh, one match was honestly the Murray match that I played in D.C. That one still hurts. And I was at the center break. I was playing good tennis. Um, honestly, I feel like if I pulled that one out too, you know, it kind of would change my hardcore summer that year because I was early in the in the hardcore swing and. And I was up a set and a break. I remember it being like 15.30 or love 30 as well. He was serving an easy like uh, forehand volley in the air. I missed it long. He ended up holding that game. And then it just became a battle. He ended up winning that set. Fought in the, in the third set. I, uh, it was like five all. And I got called for reaching over the net on like a, on a, on a game point or something. And it was like 
the craziest call I've ever seen. So it would not have been called on anyone else, especially a top player. And and I I marched in the office the next day with ATP. <laughs> you go. It was a mess, but I mean, I had that match on my fingertips, and like that would have been a really nice win for me early in my career against Murray, but that one slipped away. Well, let's get back to the wins because you had the one against Del Potro. Was that a Del Rey? Yeah. And I, I, I was watching the end of that, and you threw your racket, like, in, in jubilation. And I think the racket, was it, it was almost like it was going to come back and hit you in the face. I mean. Yeah, I did hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you learn from that? And, and how, many, how many rackets over your career do you think you've dented? You know, whether it's in, in disgust or whether it's in elation. Honestly, I haven't broken that many rackets. I say definitely less than a dozen over my whole career. Um, But that one I actually didn't break. I was, and that was a natural reaction. I was so pumped up that I won that. I just, I didn't know what to do with the racket, so I just threw it. And I threw it straight down. It was supposed to just pancake to the floor, but that thing just went right back up and hit me right in between the. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it it only, luckily my hat got most of the uh, impact took my hat off and it kind of just grazed my my forehead but it was a pretty funny moment <laughs> did some of your friends and coaching personnel did they like point that out to you and, and make poke some fun at you for that yeah there's a lot of uh social media on that throw <laughs> there is uh it's pretty funny there was a lot of uh fuss on it yeah who has the biggest calves on the ATP <laughs> tour is it you it's okay if it's you i i will I'll take that as an answer. <laughs> Honestly, like, it's tough because, like, I don't, like, look at my calves, you know, the same way no, other people what? do. No, I, I really don't. And size-wise, like, I actually don't feel like they're – I mean, maybe proportionally they're big. But, yeah. um, I mean, there's some big guys on tour. I'd say Milos, massive legs. When Burditch was on tour, I mean, he – his legs were massive. Um, I mean, just a lot of those big guys. I mean, they're just – they're monsters out there now. <laughs> what is the, the, the travel nightmare, the worst travel nightmare you've ever had to deal with going to a tournament? Logistically, missing flights, any of that where you were just like, oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, traveling is actually pretty tough on tour. That's one thing that you know, a lot of people don't realize how much effort it takes to get to places. But I've been pretty lucky. I haven't, I've never lost my tennis rackets. I'm always on time for my flights. I've, I've never really missed a flight. I missed one from Switzerland to like England. But besides that, I say just the long hauls get pretty tough. You know, I, I've never gone to a foreign country and lost my bag, but I've, I've been in the States where they've lost my bag going to the U S open. You know what? Actually at the U S open, I had a long delay and I, and I had a streak of them. Like it was the whole hard court swing. It was just like flight delay, flight delay. And um, they lost my rackets in my bag. I didn't, and it was a couple of days before the U.S. Open, so I didn't get that for like till like maybe two days before. But um, I've been lucky. Nothing too scary besides that. Um, the trips to Asia, super long. Those are always tough, getting acclimated. But nothing, nothing too scary. The I saw it was at Miami where you were like on the side of the road, you took the little video. Oh God. Yeah. What was that all about? You had to call triple a or what? <laughs> yeah. Flat tire at 3. AM. Oh my gosh. Should have called tournament transport to be honest. I, I was staying at my girlfriend's house who lives in Miami. I mean, seemed like a good idea, <laughs> but the tire pops, honestly, you know, I was on such a high. It didn't really matter too much. I won that match against Ugo Humbert six and the third. So um yeah but it took me an extra hour I saw doubles that same day so it was a little brutal Mackie McDonald joins us former UCLA tennis player now doing big things on the pro tour I'm Brian Fenley and and Mackie obviously one of your breakthroughs was the the fourth round performance at Wimbledon and then to hear the news that it's not going to take place that event this year because of COVID-19 how did you grapple with that because of what you've done there and also how well you play on grass. Yeah, honestly, I've, it's pretty unfortunate because I feel like the grass uh, season is something that I, I really want to take advantage of, and I think I'm just super good on it. And I've only, been play, or I've only played one grass court season as a pro. I played it um, – actually, I played two, but as an ATV pro 
only only that one, you know, with the that good run there. Made like quarters at her token Bosch as well. Um, but yeah, it sucks because I didn't even get to defend my round of 16 last year with my injury and now can't do it uh, with this. So, I mean, can't really control that. You know, it'll still be there hopefully next year. Uh, some better things, but I'll be excited to get back there. I just like I just like playing on grass, the quick points coming in, looking for uh, to come forward and just take time away. So it's fun for me. Has the tour given you a sense of like when – matches and tournaments might get going again hopefully this fall hopefully later this summer have you ha have an estimation on when they might be able to proceed um I mean there's a lot up in the air you know I'm staying as prepared as I can for whatever comes at me um you know I I, I mean I have to uh just keep my body right I want to take advantage of the time too but in terms of the uh tour coming back there's a chance that it will this year, I, you know, there's hopes for U.S. Open and French Open. I know the countries and the federations really want to have all these tournaments, as do the players. Um, but, you know, just thinking big picture about how they're going to do it with ball kids, you know, the food services, um, all the people that are coming in, the travel, the quarantines, if you need to go to a certain country, flying, um, refs, everything, it's uh, – that's thankfully not my decision. So sure. um, there's a lot of factors that go into the tennis, um, but I'm hoping we're going to play this year. I feel like, I feel like it's 50, 50. I think if there's a second wave, it's going to be extremely tough and I don't think it will happen. But if there's a small wave and, and, you know, some of the States and, and countries want to put the tournaments on, they, they might. So we'll see what happens. Sure. And my final question for you, for you, Mackie, is when you look at how you've used this time away from tennis, at least competition wise, to improve, what is one thing that you've added, one weapon to your game that you've enhanced that when you get back on the court and you play and we get to see you out there, that is going to be a dynamite addition to what your arsenal is all about? I've been mean, working on my serve a lot. That's something I really want to improve. You know, I've, I feel like I've improved my serve as a pro um, and it's gotten better, but there's definitely some little things I've, I've wanted to fix with that and kind of breaking that down technically has been something for me. So hopefully that, that comes out to be, you know, maybe more of a weapon. Maybe it's not going to be, you know, I'm still 5'10 and, <laughs> and not, not a giant like some of these guys, but um, you know, if, it, if I can make sure I'm holding a higher percentage and, and doing better in that department, I mean, that's going to be massive for me um, um, because I know I can break practically anyone on tour with my return. So hopefully my serve is something to look out for. Uh, yeah, and watch out the rest of the competition as those two come together, your return game and obviously your service game. Mackie McDonald, a legend through the hollowed halls of UCLA, one of the finest Bruins, and he's really got his career – and it's rebounding now coming off this injury. Mackie, thank you so much for doing this and would love to do this again once this tennis gets going again. We're proud of you and keep up the good work, man. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate it.